I, I think I, I don't think that Tony Parker gets enough credit, but it's not because people don't realize his greatness or they think he's soft or anything. We just don't pay a lot of attention to the Spurs. Mm -hmm. Nationally, in terms of the NBA view of the San Antonio Spurs, they do everything right. They're pristine. They have an elite first-class organization, a first-class coach who's considered widely considered the best in the business. They have a, star, a, a, a superstar in Tim Duncan who does everything to diminish the superstar label. Even I remember years ago when Tim Duncan dunked on Amari Stoudemire's face. Everybody else would pose and flex their muscle. Tim Duncan just turned around and ran down court. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you didn't no catch the, if you didn't yeah. catch the dunk yeah. or the replay by the TV, you'd have never known he uh -huh. just dunked. You'd have thought he did a spin move and a bank shot. Yeah. That's Tim Duncan. And so when you look at the San Antonio Spurs collectively, they do little to nothing to bring attention to themselves. Outside of San Antonio, nobody really notices them until they're in front of your face competing for a championship. And that is why Tim Tony Parker is underappreciated. It's not because they look at him and say, oh, he's not that good, or he's soft, or he's not tough. If you watch Tony Parker play and you know a speck about basketball, you know that he's great. You know that he's an elite player in this game. You know that he's one of, if not the best point guard in this game. And he also happens to be a three-time champion. It's just that the Spurs are devoid of sizzle, per se. Yeah. And as a result, mm -hmm. you don't really pay attention to him. The greatest attention Tony Parker ever got was that he was married to Eva Longoria. Yeah. That is bad. it. That's not bad, though. Well, his decision-making at the time was uh -huh. exceptional. Exceptional. But then, as we learned, mm -hmm. all things that glitter and go. Let's move on. A little nugget for you at home. You covered Allen Iverson in those years in Philly where he would just go flying in among the trees, try to get to the basket, I've never seen anything take like the foul, yes. and fall 15 feet to the Tony ground. Tony Parker's close. He's close. But, but, but nobody's Allen Iverson in that regard. But you know what? He's closer than people give him credit for, Tony Parker. He takes a lot of punishment in the lane. He takes some hard falls. He took four or five last night, and I'm thinking, please get up. Please, Tony. He is playing on a hamstring that we cannot know how bad it is, but he keeps nursing it through game after game. I saw Takeo Spikes, our friend from the NFL, tweet late last night. Gee, it's hard. I'm paraphrasing his tweet, but it's, he was questioning whether he could really be hurt because if you have a, as right, I've talked about playing. before, if it's pulled, it is pulled, man, and you cannot play through that. So it's hard for us to know exactly how tweaked or pulled it is. But he's a tough guy. Yeah. And the problem he has to me in America, if you speak with a French accent, it is such a beautiful tongue. It's just, it, it, it sounds so sophisticated, mm -hmm. so eloquent, mm -hmm. that it's hard to perceive Tony Parker as anything more than lover, not fighter. But the French right? are perceived, as you know, as very elegantly sure. simple people. Yeah. They're just right. simple, well, so that's why they say that. The one thing that I was, a couple of things actually. Number one, if you stand next to Tony Parker and Allen Iverson, I covered Allen Iverson every day for the first 10 years of his career. Allen Iverson is legitimately two to three inches shorter than Tony Parker and about 15 pounds lighter. People don't realize that. When you say Allen Iverson is miniature, he is miniature compared to a Tony. Tony Parker is deceptively bigger than what people realize. That's number one. Number two, Allen Iverson was a scorer. He was a two-guard running off screens, running off picks, looking to score every time he had the ball. Tony Parker is a facilitator. He can score, has that ability, but he's running off a lot with the ball. There's a lot of screens and picks that are set for him. So he, even though he's close, he's not subjected to the same level of physicality that Allen Iverson was subjected to. And Allen Iverson was smaller. Okay. So let's keep that in mind. But I think in quickness, Tony Parker is close to Allen yes, Iverson. Yes, Very yes, close. Yes, yes, Crossover quickness. Yes, he is. Side to side yes, quickness. Yes, and a better decision maker because he's a natural point guard, whereas Allen Iverson was a scoring natural machine scorer. in a point guard's body. Right. It's and it different. was very interesting. Avery noted this, and it sort of came together in my head that last night, they basically, the Spurs said, let's just forget about the pick and roll because, yeah. as you know, they're jumping every, they're trapping Tony off every pick and roll. Last night, they just said, let him have the ball at the top, he and Ginobili, 
Let him just go where he wants to go. And by the Norris, way, Cole, right. Mike Miller, just name something. He and, just torched and, and by the way, most of the time, even when Tony Parker is looking to score, there's a pick or a screen set for him. With Allen Iverson, you simply moved out the way. He was one-on-one -on -one yeah, or one-on-two, on two, yeah. and he'd take you. Yeah. There's the difference. So he was definitely subjected to more punishment than Tony Parker So if, if I had to vote MVP, and I know you disagreed before, but, but again, big picture, the driving force of this team is Tony Parker. I'm sorry.